Hey, what's up guys? This video is going to be concentrating on configuring your machine to allow RDP connections. This is Remote Desktop Protocol and is extremely awesome. Uh, this allows you from anywhere in the world, as long as configured right, to connect in your machine as if you were sitting right in front of it. Um, also allows you to bring in your local resources from your remote location. So if you're somewhere and you have a printer connected um, in your drives as well, along with your clipboard, um, it also goes into your remote session, so it's pretty sweet. And that's what this is going to be concentrating on. So let's get started. So first and foremost, we want to make sure the RDP is enabled. Now this is a fresh install of my Windows 7 Ultimate machine. So I need to make sure that it is enabled. So first thing we want to do is we want to go to Start, right click Computer and hit Properties. We want to go to the Remote Settings. Remote settings, it's going to be don't allow connections to this computer by default. We want to allow connections from computers running any versions of remote desktop. And we're going to hit apply. And now that's out of the way. Step two, what we want to do is find the IP address of the, of, on the machine we're on. The, on the machine that we want to uh, make sure we can RDP into. So we're going to go ahead and go to command prompt and IP config slash all. And this gives us information on all the interfaces. We just want the uh, one that's connected. And as you can see, we're obtaining the IP address automatically at this time. Here's the IP address, subnet default gateway. And what we're going to go ahead and do now with that information provided, we're going to now statically set it. We are now going to specify an IP address for this machine rather than our DHCP server giving it to us. So we're going to go to Start. And if you have Network here, you're going to right-click and hit Properties. If you don't, you got to go through the Control Panel or you can just add it. Um, change adapter settings. Here's your network card. Properties. TCP IPv4. And here's where we specify. So I'm going to hit this and we're going to set it to that IP address we found. Now I'm assuming if you're watching this video you kind of already know about IP addressing and subnetting and such. Um, it is important to know. Um, I'm just going to go ahead since I need to anyway, put in my DNS servers, go ahead, use them, I don't care. Um, I'll go ahead and hit OK. Close. Now, just so we can verify, make sure that DHCP isn't enabled, you know, to satisfy our curiosity, we go up and we see that we are not enabled for DHCP. So that's cool. Our, our IP address is not changing anytime soon unless we tell it. Or make it so now next step we need to open up the port so RDP listens by on port by default 3389 now if you want to access from the outside you got to open it up on your router so what we want to go ahead and do is give me one moment while I go ahead and pull up the web interface of my D-Link router and I will show you how to configure all right, guys, so here is our virtual service settings. This is where we open the ports for whatever we may need to do. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a name for this. It's going to be RDP-VM. I'm all about organization. The reason why we statically set it is because we got to set the IP address in the router. And if it ever changes on the desktop, settings are still going to remain the same on the router. And it's just going to come up with issues. you got to troubleshoot. And your mind may be boggled, and you may not even think about it. So get that out of the way first so 0 0.193 public port you can either keep this 339 or make it some arbitrary number like 12345 all right so by default someone tries to access you know uh, from the outside and they have your external IP address um, but and they just hit enter and it doesn't go through that's because 3389 is not for the outside it's 12345 so we'll keep it 3389 in here all right, and we're going to enable this and add it. All right, there's our rule all set up. And give me one moment while we go ahead and test this out. All right, so now we're actually on my physical desktop. Um, it looks, yeah, no, really not this clean. I just don't have my stuff showing. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and hit start. We're going to type in MSTSC, Microsoft Terminal Service Connection. Hit enter. You're going to see this come up. All right. So we've enabled it in the router. We've enabled it on the VMware. Uh, well, we've opened the port on the router. We've enabled RDP on the, on the machine. 
We've set the IP address statically. So that's really all we need. Once we want RDP, all you got to do is put in the IP address. Hit connect. This is uh, now wanting enter your credentials. These credentials will be used to connect to 192.168.0.193, being that machine. Now, you need to be careful because you need to make sure you have a user specified because this is credentials for the remote machine. So if I don't have a John on that remote machine, so I need to use another account. I only and the domain needs to change. The domain is different. And give me one moment. I actually need to find that out. One second. The domain will be the name of the PC. So I'm gonna figure that out right. All right. So I actually went ahead and <laughs> named my PC something different. I actually didn't rename it before I did this. So I went ahead and did that. Did a reboot. Um, so the name of the machine I'm going to be connected to, and this is how you specify this. As you see, it's only username. So what we need to do is we need to specify the machine name so it's win 7 dash vm that's the vmware machine and you put a whack here as you see it immediately changed his domain win 7 dash vm and now vm user is the username and the password and if i hit okay securing remote connection this may take a moment give me i'm going to let that do its thing Oh, actually, here it is. So now it's just mentioning something about a certificate. I didn't create a certificate, but I know it's safe. It's fine. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to hit Don't Ask Me Again. I'm going to hit Yes. Now, I need to minimize this a little bit to fit the screen, but this is the RDP. This is my 192.168.0.193. This is my VMware, the computer Win 7. As you can see, I'm dragging. This is my RDP. If I full screen it, my square isn't that big. Uh, I didn't make it this big or full screen, but this is my VMware. Um, I could scroll a little bit. You don't have to when you're actually full screen. But now, but as you can see, and, and it did change black. You you can configure it so that way you you know your desktop shows when your RDP. It's just to make it a faster connection. But this is my. Uh, I'll verify with you here. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'll open up the oop, open up my uh, desktop here. Let's go ahead and do CMD here, and we'll scroll up. Here's VM user, as you can see, IP config, and look at that. There you go. I'm RDP'd in. I can X out any time. And let me show you here. I'm just going to. Oh, that's fine. I'm going to just drag my VMware over here. And this is what's going to show physically on the machine. VMware user logged on remotely from John PC. And I can always take over the session. And I'm back in my machine once it loads. So that's it. That's RDP. It's amazing. It's awesome. Um, I will, however, show you how to access it from the outside in a later video. Um, it is a different IP address. It's not an internal. If you know your difference between internal and external IP addressing, um, you will need to know that. Uh, you, if you don't know how to figure it out, you can always call your um, internet service provider, and they'll be more than happy to let you know as well. But this has been a presentation on how to configure your RDP or your machine to allow RDP connections, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.